Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Bible teacher Duffy Robbins, who just brought part two of Tarzan Christianity, a look at John 15, talking about abiding. We continue to look at uh, the verses that we looked at last week, right. uh, but taking a different section of them and, and speaking into those. Um, we talked a little bit about fruitful faith mm -hmm. and faithful faith. That's and, right. Um, we did have a question come in. Great. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Okay. Um, so when we're talking about this passage, what is the context of this passage and who is the audience in which Jesus was addressing? There's several parts of this. Is he talking to the Jews and Gentiles? Um, and when he's talking about cuts off and prunes the Jew, how does that apply to us as new believers? Okay, a great question. Somebody I think obviously has, has been doing some reading on the passage. Um, first of all, the, the context uh, beginning in John 13, uh, Jesus is talking to the disciples. This is uh, called the Upper Room Discourse. And uh, it actually continues into uh, chapter 17. There's some, there's some, for example, N.T. Wright, who wondered if maybe somewhere right around John 15, uh, they had left the Upper Room and had now started to walk out um, of the room and maybe were moving towards the garden or something like that. But, but, but uh, that's probably asking more of the text than the text is willing to answer. Uh, we certainly don't know that for sure, but we do know that the audience the entire time is the disciples. Um, in light of that, uh, when Jesus talks, uh, I think that's the first um, that's the first assumption we need to realize or make, and that is that he's talking to people who are his disciples. So this is true for us. Um, Secondly, uh, Jesus considered himself well in the in in um, biblical imagery. A lot of times, uh, Israel was considered um, the the vine. It was it was sort of considered the vine. And and there are commentators who believe that when Jesus talked about a vine not bearing fruit, that that was Israel in the Old Testament. That it wasn't bearing fruit, and that um, that that we have been grafted in in a sense. Those of us who are Gentiles have been grafted in. And, um, and that he is the vine, that he's sort of this, this, the new Israel. He's sort of the new covenant. His, his is a new people of God. Um, so, so with regard to Israel and Gentiles, that, uh, I think that's probably, that's probably how I'd explain that, that, that Jesus, he is talking to disciples. He himself is the new, the real Israel. In fact, um, a couple of times in the text, I didn't actually get into this in the messages this week or last week, but he even says, I am, in the Greek, he says, I am the real vine. In other words, I am the true Israel. And, uh, and uh, that we have been grafted in him. So that, that's kind of the, the context in terms of who he's talking to. Now, uh, the next part of that question was, okay, if, if, what does this have to do with about me as a new believer? And I think it means exactly what it sounds like it means, that Jesus takes very seriously our relationship with him as believers. And that that relationship is uh, going to be uh, made vivid and going to be expressed by fruit. Jesus said um, in Matthew 7, he said, you will know a tree by its fruit. And so uh, th that sort of runs a little bit uh, against the grain of, of sort of the the, 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 the kind of Oprah Jesus, the lenient Jesus, the, the come on, nice guy, you know, buddy, buddy Jesus. Uh, that that, uh, that there's a, there's a, a, a sort of a sobering warning there that is that is um, you know it's not something we like to see you don't you don't usually see that on like little Christian uh, coffee cups and things like that uh, you don't bear fruit you're going to be broken off and burned out you don't see many Christian plaques and quilts but but um, and it's interesting you'll see different Bible commentators uh, who have tried to treat the text different ways but I was amazed at how many commentaries, you know, basically said, this says what it seems to be saying. And it's troubling to us, as I said in the sermon, not because we don't understand it, but because we do. Mm -hmm. And we, and, and there are those who try to find other ways around it. I don't think there is a way with integrity. We can, we can go beyond what it says that, that Jesus wants us to bear fruit. Now, again, 
all of that is in the context of a God who gives life, a God whose desire is to prune us and to bring us to a place where we bear fruit. Uh, so it's not as if he's looking to build a big old fire and I want to break a bunch of people off. He, he grafted us into this branch by grace and he sustains us by grace. But, but clearly there has to be some intention on our part, mm. seems to me. That's good. That's good. And so you talked about disengagement, meaning when you're away from the vine or you're trying to do things away from the vine. And then you also talked about discouragement. Right. Um, and you've spoken about that a little bit, but is the discouragement that you're talking about discouraging when you when God begins to prune you or that happens in your life? Or what does that discouragement look like and what's the hope? Uh, it, it, it's kind of every, it's kind of all the above, really. It's discouragement because, uh, because of what I just talked about, the idea that, wow, uh, this is kind of for real. This Jesus, this Christianity thing, it's not like, oh, I just kind of thought it would be like a, a, a uh, you know, sort of an elective course, the obedience part. I, I can just kind of be a Christian and, and, and only people who do extra credit, you know, that, that's sort of discouraging to, to discover, no, actually, it's more serious than that. Um, when Jesus says things like, take up your cross and follow me, suggest that this is going to be more than a, a tea party. Uh, but, but it's also discouraging, I think, or it could be discouraging in, in light of the second element, which is you said, you know, what if we are really trying to focus on our fellowship with Jesus? And, and, uh, and in the process, uh, sometimes it's discouraging because we're not seeing the fruit that we want to see. Um, and sometimes... Um, maybe in, in, in order for the Lord to see the fruit, that the vine dresser to have the fruit that he wants, he does prune and he does, he does break and he does kind of put us through situations that are not pleasant. Um, I think it's discouraging for both of us. That, but to me, it comes back to the fact that, that what well, Paul says in Colossians, Christ in you is the hope of glory. And, and, and over and over, it's abide in me and me in him. And so I think what we should do as Christians, certainly what I do, and I, and I have every reason to be discouraged about, am I doing, am I, do I have the fruit? You know, um, is, uh, is, is I go, hey, this, you know, I've, I wanna, it's not about me trying to wake up every day and, and be good, you know. Uh, can't we just all get along, kind of Rodney King, you know, the, it's no, it's me trying to maintain my focus with Jesus and bear my relationship with Jesus. It's not unlike, you know, you with your children. I mean, you don't, you're not, you, you want to, you want to see them, you want to see them grow. And sometimes you will discipline them. I and mean, Jesus, I mean, does that. In fact, uh, the writer of Hebrews says in chapter 11, that a loving father chastens those whom he loves. But, but, you know, any kid knows that's not, that can be discouraging and quite painful, but it's a manifestation of love, good. not abandonment. Good, good. Thank you for that. Um, well, I've certainly enjoyed these two weeks. It is always so fun Thanks, to have you here um, and we wish you so much gratitude and thankfulness this holiday season. To Appreciate the, it. I look forward to being family. back uh, yeah. after well, New Year's. Right. You'll be back yep. after New Year's. It'll so be great. great. We can't wait to see you back then too. Looking forward and we'll to see it. you back here next week. Thank you for joining us for Postscript. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.